In this video, I'm going to show you how to replace your fuel injector on this Dodge Grand Caravan. Let's get started. Before we start, I want to release fuel pressure from the system. So I'm going to pop this fuse box out. It's located on the driver's side under the hood, right next to your battery. Open this up. You'll find your fuse puller right here. It's this yellow piece. If you don't have this because it's missing, just use some needle nose pliers. And I'm going to pull two different fuses that have to do with the fuel system. I'm going to pull this 10 amp fuse here. Set that aside safely. And this 20 amp fuse over here. Okay, this one's a little bit stuck. So I'll just grab it with my needle nose. Now we're going to crank the engine over. I'm going to pull these off so they don't fall down. Crank the engine over. That will activate the fuel injectors, but because we have these out, no fuel pressure is being fed to them, so they will basically just drain the pressure in the system. Crank the engine over. It may start and die, or it may not start at all. Okay, there we go. Now let's disconnect our battery. You're going to use a 10 millimeter socket or wrench and remove, not remove, but loosen up this nut right here. This is going to unclamp the negative battery terminal. I recommend removing the negative, not the positive. Once you loosen it up a little, you should be able to slide this off and push it out of the way over here so it can't make contact. Remove your engine cover. If your vehicle has one, just pull straight up on it. Now we can continue with our job. Pull that little red locking tab backwards to unlock the connector, just like that. Now you can press down on that, pull the connector right out. And now with this unplugged, let's pop this retainer out of the intake, set that aside. Might as well follow this harness right over here. Got another retainer, pop that off on the throttle body, just like this. Unplug the throttle body connector. There we go. One last connector over here. Unplug this. Now you can set the whole harness aside out of the way of the intake. Take this hose off. Just slide it off the air box. Now you can flip it up. Be careful because it is hard plastic. You don't want to break it. Follow it over on this side and just pop it off of here. I'm going to take this air intake duct out of the way. It's got two clamps. Both are eight millimeter headed screws. Loosen these up. There's another one on the air box side. With those off, you should be able to wiggle this right off. Sometimes they get stuck from being here for so long. The plastic gets stuck to the rubber. There we go. Pull this aside. To get this off, it's just sitting on some rubber grommets, so pull really hard upwards, it'll pop out, and then you should be able to just slide it out of place. Once it's off the back and off the throttle body, pull backwards, that'll unlodge it off the front, and you can take this out. Let's take this hose off of here, set that aside, pull this hose off of the intake, this is for the uh, rear valve cover, PCV. Uh, valve, and then there's another one right here. This is also a vacuum hose. Be gentle if you have to use anything to pry these off. You don't want to break anything. Just slowly push them off. There we go. At the front of the engine here where the manifold bolts onto these two brackets, it's supposed to have two 10 millimeter sized nuts. Well, mine are missing. I will put them back when the time comes to reinstall everything, but right now I see brackets that are slightly bent and two missing mounting nuts. So if yours are still there, which they should be, remove them. I'm going to address the situation once the manifold is off of here. On the back side of the manifold where the throttle body is, you'll notice a similar bracket set up here with two 10 millimeter nuts. These are here. We're going to have to pull this bracket off to do that. I'm going to take the retainer for this wire off. There's also another one right down here, which exposes its main anchor point. I'm going to take the two 10 millimeters off. And now let's take off that 13 millimeter down there. With that out, you should be able to pull the bracket off. Looks like there's one more wire attached to it. Pull that out. Now you can remove the bracket. 
Now there are seven eight millimeter headed bolts that hold this intake, the upper intake, onto the lower. I'm gonna work my way from the outer bolts to the inner bolts, just breaking them free. And then once they're broken free, I will remove them the rest of the way. These bolts will not come out completely. They will stay in the intake. Now grab the intake, pull it straight up, set it aside. Now take this foam off. Now I'm going to unplug the fuel rail feed line. We did already relieve pressure before we started everything, so there should not be a whole lot of fuel coming out of this line. Keep in mind, there still will be some that leaks out. You're gonna to wanna to squeeze this green connector. Well, push the, push the line in, squeeze the green connector, and that should allow you to release the line off the rail here. The part that's underneath is a little tricky to get to. I'm gonna use a pick to help me press underneath there. There we go. Okay, there we go. Like I said, minimal fuel is spilling. Now we have to unplug the injectors. Just press on the tabs and pull them out. I'm gonna pull these retainers out of the valve cover and then remove the harness or just set it aside just like that. Two T30 Torx bolts hold this fuel rail on. Because I already opened up the rail and the fuel line, I'm going to use hand tools, not electric power tools, just so I don't create any sort of sparks here. Take these out, set them aside. Now we should be able to gently pull this fuel rail out. You don't wanna pry on it, this is plastic. Not only could it break the rail, it could damage an injector that you may not be planning on replacing. So very gently wiggle it back and forth. The injectors will eventually break free. There we go. If your O-rings get stuck inside the fuel rail, just pick them off and put them right back on the injector. Now we can set this part of the rail aside and let's replace our injector. Now I'm going to show you how to replace just this one injector because the procedure for all the other ones is gonna be exactly the same. I'm going to very gently Take the, these needle nose pliers and pry this straight up like this. Now, there is a lot of fuel down there and that actually will help us because it will allow it to uh, slide a little bit easier once it does break free. Okay, it's coming out. Slow, steady pressure and there you have it, my O-ring is right here, and I do have quite a bit of debris there. I'm gonna clean that out, but there is your fuel injector. At this point, I strongly recommend some compressed air so you can blow all this debris out. Do not use a vacuum and suck up fuel and any fuel-soaked debris that you have here. Put this down in the hole. I'm gonna put a rag over it so it doesn't blow everywhere. To put this injector in, it's actually easiest if you spray the bottom with some brake parts cleaner, just a little bit, or some leftover fuel, and there you have it, that slides right in. Now I'm gonna drop the fuel rail down on these, and I'm gonna take a little bit of brake parts cleaner, spray it on the O-rings, that's gonna help them slide down into place. There we go, twist the injectors as needed to line them up. And there you have it. Now put these bolts back in. Now they are coarse threaded bolts that screw into the plastic of the intake. So you wanna make sure you match up the threads. When you don't, it'll actually cut new threads, but that makes the existing threads weaker. I'm gonna bottom these out. The torque for them is 62 inch pounds. It's a very low torque. If you don't have anything that'll go that low, just make them nice and snug by hand. Grab your fuel rail feed line, slide it back on here, make sure it clicks. 
There we go, that's connected. Now let's plug in all the injectors. Make sure all the connectors click as you plug them in. And if you took the harness off of these retainers, re-secure it so it can stay in place. Now before we set the upper intake back on, you wanna make sure you check these gaskets and if they are still pliable, soft, and they're not flat, so these are raised up a little bit, they're good to go, you can reuse them. If they are stiff or flat completely with the lower intake, you're gonna to wanna to replace them so that it can seal up properly. Next, put this foam piece on. Mine is in okay condition, it's not great. If yours is completely falling apart, you're better off removing it rather than it falling apart underneath the intake here. But if it's reusable, go ahead and reuse it. Now as you put the upper intake in, make sure it lines up with these two brackets here. So I'm gonna bring it in, line those two up, and press it backwards like that. And then, as long as the brackets are still lined up like they were before, when you put this down, all the bolts here should line up into their uh, bolt holes. So before I bolt on any brackets, it is important to actually bolt it to the lower intake first so that this is sealed up, then you secure everything around it. Now let's tighten these up. I'm just going to snug them at first, get the bolts nice and close, but I will follow the appropriate sequence for this. You'll see it on the screen. Eighty-nine inch-pounds is the torque for this. That converts to 7.4 foot-pounds. We'll follow the same exact sequence. Let's go around one more time. All right, that's torqued. Now let's get this rear bracket in. Not only do you have to line it up with the studs, but before I put it down all the way in, it'll be easier for me to re-secure this harness onto it right now, just like that. Now I'll line it up with these and automatically it should pretty much line up with the mounting bolt or mounting hole for this stud at the bottom. There was only one. Okay, I'm gonna thread that by hand until I get it close and then we'll snug that up. The torque for this is 177 inch pounds. That converts to 14.8 foot pounds. Let's uh, make sure it's nice and tight here so I can hold that intake manifold on the bracket properly. Make sure everything is still lined up before you torque this. That's it right there. Now let's put these mounting nuts on. Now with your 10 millimeter, snug them up. These don't need to be very tight. They just need to be snug. You don't want to break the studs or strip the threads. Now let's do the two front ones. And now let's get the two front mounting nuts on. These were the ones that I was missing before removing this, but you want to make sure you re-secure them so that the intake is properly secured to the engine. Same with these, just make them nice and snug after they bottom out about an eighth of a turn. Resecure the upper radiator hose to the intake. Resecure your wiring harness onto that stud. There was another retainer over there. This also gets clipped into the PCV hose. And then might as well plug in the PCV hose while, while we're at it. Try not to bend this, this part too much because it is hard plastic. So you can 
break it, but make sure that this is seated all the way, or at least most of the way. You can see where the fitting ends. Resecure this over here, and might as well plug this in while we're at it. Make sure that clicks. This did have a lock, so make sure you lock that down. Put this hose back on the intake. Resecure this over here, and then another attachment point there, but make sure the PCV hose goes over, or the, uh, the vacuum hose. Secure that, and plug the throttle body back in. Make sure that clicks. Let's put this piece back on. When you put it on, make sure it fully seats on that throttle body so you don't have any air leaks. It also has two little uh, dowels on the back that it has to line up with, as well as on the intake here. Press that down. Once you press it down, you should not be able to easily pull it back off. That's how you know it's seated. Plug this in. Take your air intake duct, place it on the intake side. Make sure it's bottomed out completely. It has a little notch on the top that has to line up over here. And same on the air filter housing. Once it's perfectly seated, go ahead and snug up these bolts. Once it's fully seated, snug up these clamps. For these, you don't have to tighten them a lot. Once they bottom out and get snug, stop right there because if you over tighten them, it'll actually strip the little screw in there and then you'll have to replace the clamp. Okay, that's it right there. Let's tighten up this one over here. Now get this PCV hose resecured on the valve cover, the front valve cover here. And then this one runs over all the way to the air box. Press both of these ends on all the way. Now take your engine cover, line it back up, snap it down. Now with the job done, let's reconnect our battery. When you put it on, keep in mind, sometimes it may make a little spark. There we go. Let's snug this back up. When you tighten it, don't crush it down completely, just make it snug, and if you can't spin the terminal, you're good to go. If you over tighten it, it'll actually ruin this connector and it'll stretch it out. Now let's put our fuel pump fuses back. The 10 amp fuse went on the top here. Press it down all the way until it's flush with the other ones. And the 20 amp fuse, if you took both out, goes right over here. Press that down, and if you used your fuse puller, put that right back in there, close this. Let's turn on the engine. Now let's prime the fuel system. To do that, you want to turn the ignition to the on position. I'm going to do this three, four times, or really as many times as it takes to get fuel through that fuel rail. Shut it off. This is going to let the pump run when you turn it on, uh, and then uh, it will only run for a few seconds, so that's why I'm shutting it off and then turning it back on. And once again, after I do this a few times, I will start it. When you start it, keep in mind, it may start and then die again, so just prime it again and try again until you get proper fuel pressure. Let's try this out. Looks like it worked for us. Plenty of fuel in the fuel rail. If yours didn't work, prime it again and you should be good to go. Now with everything back together, turn the engine on, take it for a road test. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.